Good morning, BSRT2 students. Welcome back to our virtual classroom on RT213. This is Principles of Imaging. So the last time, we have discussed all about one of the photographic or the radiographic qualities, which is in the form of optical density. So we have defined that optical density, this is simply the blackening of a radiograph. So... Uh, as our conclusion, so we said that black is beauty. But this morning, we are to give another photographic or radiographic quality. This is again, contrast. So uh, before I started with my lecture, um, allow me to share with you my, one of my favorite childhood memories. Yan. So, nagulat kayo, no? Social yung mga kababata ko. Actually, hindi yan ako, ah. Kumuha lang ako ng picture sa internet. So, nung bata pa ako, masaya naman kaming nanonood ng TV kahit black and white lang. So, naabutan ko pa yun. Mm -mm. Hindi naman sa makaluma akong tao, but yun talaga yung panahon namin, no? Uh, yan. So, after how many years, pumasok na yung mga colored TV. Eh, bakit? May masama ba sa black and white? In fact, mas na appreciate uh, personally um there is art in the colors black and white. Do you believe that class? So, what do you see in these pictures? All of them are forms of art but are expressed in black and white. So, uh, we can say that purely white and purely black um, compared with black and white. So we can say that there is more picture if the combination of these two colors can be seen in one picture. So this is what I'm trying to impose. So there is what we call the contrast or the density differences. Okay, so as what you can see in the picture, my black, my white, and we said there is the form of art. Okay, so there are differences in the color, and that is what we call the contrast. So again, this is one of the uh, radiographic or optical qualities. So let us define what is contrast. So when we say contrast, this is the difference in the density between two structures. So contrast can be high with sharp differences in dark and light areas or low with very little differences between densities. So the presence of contrast means that different density levels are visible on the radiograph. The density levels on the radiograph are multiple, ranging from light or almost clear to dark areas. So if there's the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, so, that also implies to uh, radiographic contrast. As you can see in our illustration, so there are different scales or shades of gray or blackening. So, this is from the very light up to very dark. Parang, it's almost the same here, from very light to very dark. Okay, so... Uh, this range or these steps of different uh, uh, density levels make the radiographic contrast. Okay, so contrast can also be identified as the ratio of radiation intensity as it exits a specific type on tissue to radiation intensity exiting an adjacent type of tissue. So, for example, the amount of radiation striking the film as it exits the area of the lung tissue measured 20 millirentgen, and the amount measured as the radiation exits the area of the heart is 8 millirentgen. So, in this generalized example, the lungs would have more exposure and would have shown to be darker area compared with the adjacent heart shadow where less remnant radiation exited the part strike the film. Contrast is the presence, and the radiologist would then be able to distinguish the heart shadow from the surrounding lung tissue. 
Okay, class, if you still remember our discussion the last time on a specific uh, term, we have the attenuation. Diba? So, depende sa attenuation property ng radiation. Sabi nga dito, kasi nga dumaan siya sa lungs. So, nagbigay tayo ng example, 20 millirent gan yung na-receive or nag-exit sa lung. So, the lung appear darker. And we have given an example to the heart, which we give uh, a value of 8 millirent gan. Of course, mas, uh, mas mabagal ang penetration or therefore there is attenuation there is reduction of uh, the energy of X-ray, diba? Passing through a, dif uh, an, uh, a certain area. So, uh, here, the uh, area appeared lighter compared with the lungs. Kasi nga dito, so, nagpas lang yung radiation through and through, whereas dito, may mga dinaanan siyang medium. So, yun. Therefore, there are density differences from the black area of the lungs to the white area of the heart or mediastinum so we can create a chest radiography picture. Another example or another explanation is that contrast is important uh, on radiograph because it functions to make structural detail visible. Kaya nga, this is one of the photographic or radiographic or optical qualities along with the optical density. So the radiologist must be able to see the detail and visible borders present. So contrast is the factor that makes the borders of the anatomic structures visible as well as the fine details within the object. So the function of the contrast is to make the detail more visible. For example, in our illustration, so we can almost see the stomach. We can almost see the kidneys. Okay? So, the uh, the, ure the, the ureters and the urinary bladder. Okay? So, without the contrast, again, it is quite visible to see the detail. In fact, we can delineate the bones as well. Okay? So, that is why it says here that contrast is important on a radiograph. Okay? So, the visibility or the detail of uh, the image is highlighted with the use of radiographic contrast. Next, we can say that contrast is also related to attenuation. Again, attenuation, this is the reduction in the strength or force as a result of absorption and interactions. So, as the X-ray photons travel through the body tissue, they are attenuated. The result is an X-ray beam that is no longer uniform. So, attenuation of the beam is a reduction in the strength or force due to absorption and interactions. So, yun yung sinabi ko kanina. So, uh, some of our tissues absorb or attenuate the radiation strongly. Therefore, they appear white on the radiograph. Kasi nga, hindi nakapass through yung radiation. And some of the tissues allow the radiation to just pass through. Especially yung mga aerated or yung mga uh, air tissues. Such as lungs, na talagang nagpa-pass through lang yung radiation. So, technically, they appear black on a radiograph. So, uh, example, the white ones, the bone, or such as the ribs, tapos the lung field is black. So, therefore, we can create a picture also of a chest radiography. No? So, depende pala yung contrast sa attenuation. As well as, depende yung density sa attenuation. Diba sinabi natin, density differences on a radiograph. Ang pagkakaiba-iba ng blackness sa radiograph, that is the contrast. And this is also dependent on the attenuation. So, ito yung example natin last time. So, contrast is a result of attenuation and with differential absorption of tissue. 
without beam attenuation contrast would not be present because a uniform density level would be present. So, pag isang density lang pala, wala tayong matatawag na contrast. Pag halimbawa, puro black yung film, wala tayong matatawag na contrast. Pag puro white, wala ding contrast. So, therefore, to... Uh, uh, so that we can say that there is contrast in radiography, at least my steps of density differences. Okay, makikita mo may iba-ibang portion ng, uh, sa film na may white, may black. Uh -huh. So, iba-iba yung shades of gray nila. No? So, uh, uh, when no absorber has been placed in the beam, the density levels would not change. So also contrast is a result of attenuation and the differential absorption in the tissue. For example, because in the bone it has less attenuation, so they appeared white on the radiograph. So uh, water and fats. Okay, so water, wala tayong typical example dito sa film. So we can say fats. Okay, kasi um, there is a bigger penetration compared with the bone, so slightly nag black na siya. And of course, with the air, for example, the stomach, so nag lang or nag-pass through lang yung radiation, so it appears dark on a radiograph. Again, nakapag-create tayo ng steps of different optical densities in the film, because of the different attenuation of the tissue, and that makes contrast. Another is the relationship of contrast and silver deposits. So another way to describe contrast is that the distribution of metallic silver that is present following the development of the latent image. So areas of greater silver deposits have more density and areas with smaller silver deposits will have less density. If you can still remember, um, during the exhibit last or before the pandemic, uh, may na-mention tayong Gurney-Mott theory. So, if you have time, basahin nyo. Okay, so advanced reading kasi this is partly a discussion for next semester. So, this is formation or the latent image formation. So, the area that is exposed or na, nagkaroon ng uh, uh, bigger penetration yung radiation, syempre na exposed mostly yung black metallic silver. And those areas appear black on the radiograph. Okay? So, therefore, there is a relationship also of uh, the metallic silver deposits when they are when the film is processed developed and fixed accordingly and then that is right after the attenuation properties of the tissue okay so the what is the controlling factor of contrast if the last time we said that mas is the controlling factor for optical density however KVP affects the optical density. So here we can say that the technical factor that controls contrast is the kilo voltage or the kilo volt peak or the KVP. The radiologists want to see complete images of the tissue and not simply a silhouette or outline. So radiographers must produce radiographs that demonstrate the structural detail of the structure. So contrast is controlled. Take note of the KVP. My question is, so sinabi natin last time that uh, optical density is controlled by MAS. However, it is affected by KVP. So pwede rin ba na MAS, which is the controlling factor for optical density, maka-affect ba siya sa radiographic contrast? Yes or no? Okay, let's find out. So in order for the radiologist to visualize the desired detail, the part must be adequately penetrated. 
So penetration of the part is controlled by the kilovoltage. So attenuation and the distribution of densities across the film are significantly affected by the kilovoltage selection. So therefore, the factor to be used to control contrast is the kilovoltage. So paano natin compute? Or we, how are we going to say that the penetration is enough or adequate for a certain part? So here we have the formula. KVP equals thickness times 2 plus the machine constant. Actually, we can uh, or we, are, we will discuss this uh, next week. So um, KVP with the use of an instrument may measure natin yung thickness ng part. Okay, so multiply the thickness by 2 and add the machine constant. So we can say that with the use of this formula, we can create a good quality radiograph. So ito yung panahon na ako ay nagpra-practice pa as radiologic technologist. This is my uh, radiologist when I was still connected with the Northwestern Later District Hospital. Okay, so next. So, ito yung question ko kanina. If milliampere can affect the radiographic contrast. So, milliampere seconds changes the quantity of photons in the beam and cannot be used as substitute to factor to alter contrast in a radiograph. Again, Penetration is not affected by increase or decrease in MAS. Therefore, no appreciable amount of increase in beam quantity can make up for lack of energy of the X-ray photons in the beam. In other words, do not use MAS as the technical factor to produce changes in contrast. Kilovoltage controls the contrast and MAS only controls the density. So therefore, there is no relationship of MAS to radiographic contrast. Parang ang daya ng life, no class? Only KVP pwede siyang na, uh, affecting factor na siya, ano no, controlling factor na siya ng contrast at the same time, affecting factor siya ng density. However, MAS, controlling factor siya ng density and wala siyang relationship sa contrast. Kasi nga, the penetration. Okay, we are talking about the penetration. Mm -mm. The energy of photons. Okay? Or the quality of photon. So, this is controlled by kilovoltage. And MAS, we are just only talking the quantity or the number of photons that are being used in radiography. So, therefore, hindi makakapag-substitute ang dami ng photons sa lakas ng photon na dapat or required sa isang anatomy. Again, quality beats quantity all the time. Class, take note of that. Kahit gaano karami, uh, kahit gaano kataas ang MAS, wala siyang relasyon sa contrast ng radiography. We are talking here yung gaano kalakas yung photon na makapag-penetrate sa body ng tao and that is being controlled by the KVP or the kilovolt peak. Okay? Okay, sige. So in diagnostic radiology, two types of contrast are generally recognized. We have the subject contrast and the film contrast. So the ability to see skeletal structures on a radiograph is due to the presence of subject contrast. Okay, so when we are talking of the anatomy, we are referring to the subject contrast. When we are talking about the film, okay, processing, so we are talking about film contrast. So combined together, we form the radiographic contrast. Sige, let's talk about subject contrast. So the energy of the photons must be great enough to penetrate the anatomic parts. And this depends on the structure, the thickness, and characteristics of the tissue composition. 
Tissue with greater water content requires more energy to penetrate the part than tissue composed mainly of fat or air, as you can see in our illustration. Bone requires greater energy to penetrate than any soft tissue structure in the body. Therefore, when the combination of these types are present uh, in the area to be exposed by the primary beam, subject contrast will be Evident. As I've said, when we are talking on the anatomy or the structure, we are referring to the subject contrast. So it says here, it depends upon the structure, the thickness, mataba ba yung pasyente or payat. So that is also part of the subject contrast. Sige nga. Sige nga. Comparing mo yung dalawang uh, uh, tao. Let's say, Miss Aloha de Lorino compared with Mr. Sino ba? Uh, uh, Kapukyan siguro? Larin Kapukyan? So, i-compare mo yung uh, uh, thickness ng kanilang katawan. So, who do you think will require higher KVP or higher penetration? Uh, uh, ha, sino yung magre-require ng mas mataas na technical factor para makapag-compensate tayo ng uh, magandang image or ibig sabihin ko yung x-ray mo si Miss Dolorino at saka si Miss Kapukyan sino sa kanilang dalawa ang magre-require tayo ng mas mataas na challenge of course the thicker the part the thicker is the technical factor and characteristics of the tissue composition Okay, for example, bone versus air. Okay, saan dyan yung may ma mabagal ang penetration? Of course, sabi nga natin, mas na-attenuate yung photons dito sa bone. Whereas dito, nagpa-pass through lang yung radiation. So again, the type of medium, the type of, uh, yun nga, uh, where, where the radiation is passing through, we can say that this is part of the subject contrast. Okay, yeah, very good. Next, pathology is also a factor in subject contrast. So pathology or the disease is under subject contrast. Wala tayong tinatawag na pathologic contrast. Still, we are talking about the subject contrast. Kasi nga, hindi lahat ng pasyente sa radiology sub, um, are able uh, to follow the instruction of a radiologic technologist. Kasi most of them, expect na lang, most of our patients are toxic patients. Hindi naman yan nagpapa-x-ray kung wala yung nararamdaman sa katawan. Ano? So most of our clients in the radiology department, may mga nararamdaman sa katawan na hindi maganda. Kaya nga, nag x ray tayo. So pathology is also a factor in the subject contrast. Disease processes often change the tissue structures and composition by making them more or less dense. So these changes can be visualized by subject contrast if the tissue changes are sufficient. So as a review, we said last time that um, technical factors are uh, influenced by the pathology or disease processes of the body. So similarly, meron din tayong tinatawag na destructive and constructive pathology. Those pathologies that appear radiolucent, they appear black on the radiograph and those that are radiopaque or they appear white on the radiograph. So tandaan nyo na lang to, class. Okay? Hindi ko na yan uh, mention one by one. So I give you responsibility to define and uh, to study the disease processes or the pathology side of this. Uh, actually, marami pa yan. Examples lang to. Okay? So, uh, let me just have a review or a recap. So, when we say subject contrast, so it is dependent sa tao mismo. Or kung yung ini x ray is hayop, sa hayop. Okay? So, depende yan sa structure, sa thickness, at karakteristik ng tissue composition, and of course, yung pathology or disease process. So, meron tayong destructive pathology. They appear radiolucent. They appear black on the radiograph. And we have constructive pathology or radiopaque. They appear white on the radiograph.
Next, we have the film contrast. So, film contrast refers to those qualities of X-ray film that result in the recording of high quality or low contrast. The qualities are inherent in the preparation of the emulsion. So, inherent. Itong contrast pala to, nandoon na sa X-ray film. However, this is influenced by fog and scatter uh, film contrast. Fog and scatter and are undesirable density that produces uh, great tones on the film which decrease contrast. So, pwede nating tawagin siyang development fog. So, halimbawa, uh, medyo you stayed longer in the development tank. Okay, so you immersed your film in the uh, developer for longer time. So, nagde-develop na siya ng fog. Oo. Uh -uh. That's what we call processing fog or development fog. So they appear or they affect the finished uh, optica, uh, optical, yan, optical density or the density differences or otherwise this is the contrast. Okay, so contrast is described as either long scale, short scale, or moderate scale. So when we say or scale re refers to the number of different density pre densities present on the radiograph. So if a radiograph was cut up uh, into tiny uh, little squares, each representing density level, and the squares lined up in a graduated column with the highest uh, or the lightest square at the top and the darkest uh, square at the bottom, bak parang nabaliktad ito, so, sabi na lang natin, with the lightest at the bottom, tapos yung darkest at the top. So, this would represent the scale of contrast. Ayun. Or the range, di ba? The range of density levels. So, yung ito, yung, the range of densities, this is also called the scale of contrast. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na long scale, meron din tayong short scale. So, when we say long scale of contrast, this means that the difference in recorded density of the adjacent structure is very small. Oh, oh, medyo confusing siya, class, no? When we say, again, long scale of contrast, it means that the difference in recorded density of adjacent structure is very small. And many density levels are present. There are many different shades of gray between lightest and darkest density values. So, radiographs with very long scale appear gray. So, in our illustration at the right side of the monitor, which one would you say uh, has the longer scale? So, is it the uh, is it th this one? Ito ba yung long scale of contrast or ito? So, if you answered this one, ay nagkakamali kayo. So, terms to describe long scale can be confusing. For example, long scale means low contrast or low degree of contrast, decreased or not enough contrast. So, low contrast and low degree refer to very small density uh, differences from one square to the next. So, not enough contrast is a term used by many who believe long scale has too many gray tones and not enough subject contrast. So, we can say that this one has low contrast and or a low scale of contrast. Ganito na lang. Whatsoever film appears dark on a radiograph that is of high contrast. And whatsoever appears white uh -oh, uh, can be said to have a long scale of contrast. Uh -oh. So, compare mo na lang yung balat mo sa classmate mo. Pag feeling mo mas puti-puti uh, ka sa kanya, so meaning you have a long scale of contrast or low contrast. Kasi hindi ka pa dark. Pag dark na siya, you can, uh, your, your classmate can be considered high contrast or ano siya, uh, short scale of contrast kasi dark siya eh. Kuha? Oh, diba? Medyo confusing siya ha? Kasi sinabi siyang long scale of contrast kasi medyo maputi siya compared sa ibang film.
Mm-mm. Pag maputi-puti, so that is long scale of contrast or not enough contrast or low ang contrast. Okay? Very good. Okay, so next. The advantage of long scale of contrast is the visualization of more structural detail. And long scale is a result of higher kilo voltage. So the higher the KVP, the longer is the scale of contrast. So the higher the kilo voltage, the more gray tones on, are present on the radiograph. And part of the grayness is a result of increased scatter radiation. So tandaan nyo yan. Part of the grayness is a result of the increased scatter radiation produced by the increased kilo voltage. So, whatsoever radiographic technique requires high kilo voltage, so we can say that this is of long scale of contrast or short contrast or low contrast. Huh, di ba? Ang galing ng pagkakagawa nila. Pagkaka-confuse sa inyo. Ok, balitaw. So, again, pag the, the film appears quite uh, whiter or lighter, so we can say that is of a longer scale of contrast. Okay, so for example, chest radiography is of or should be of long scale of contrast kasi marami tayong dapat makita dito. Mm -mm. So marami ang kailangang makitang anatomy of interest. Okay, sige, how, how about the bones? Kasi we are only after the density of the bone, hindi naman tayo after sa soft tissue. So, we can say that the bone is long, or long scale, short scale of contrast, or this is uh, high contrast. Diba? So, pansin nyo, teka lang, pansin nyo, oh, oh, mas darker siya, diba? Mas darker siya compared dito. So, we can say this is of high contrast. However, this is categorized as short scale of contrast. So, short scale of contrast is present when the density differences in adjacent structures are adrapt or pronounced. So, short scale of contrast is produced by the use of low KVP. So, a short, uh, a short uh, scale of contrast is produced by the use of low KVP. Or technically, yung mga uh, technical factors for hand and compared with the chest or abdomen, syempre, mas mababa yung KVP ng hand and other uh, extremities. So, a shorter scale of contrast is more ideal to examine the bone. Okay, so radiographs appear black and white with very little gray tones. So, kaya pala sinabi siyang uh, short scale of contrast or high contrast kasi mas darker siya. Very little yung pagka-gray. Kailangan mas dark yung film para makonsider natin siyang high contrast or short scale of contrast. So, the advantage of a scale of contrast is too short are important. Exposure factors selected to produce short scale of contrast use low KVP selection. So, radiographs of the spine, the skull, and other more dense anatomic structures may produce short scale of contrast, may be inadequate for penetrating thicker parts. Close examination reveals a silhouette or uh, without visualization of structural details. Yun yung pinaka uh, disadvantage. Kasi nga, hindi natin nakikita ang detail na ng skull. All we can see is that white na lang siya. So, hindi enough yung penetration. Okay, so uh, another point to remember which short scale of contrast is that because of low KVP selections, the amount of radiation absorbed by the patient increases. So there sh uh, uh, by theory, nagkakaroon lang ng skin penetration. Uh, kasi nga, mababa yung KVP. Hindi siya nagpe-penetrate, di ba? Compared with high KVP factors na talagang magpapastro siya sa anatomy. Ito, shallow skin penetration lang siya. Okay, so the terms associated with short scale of contrast are higher contrast, ayun, high, contra high degree of contrast, and more contrast. O, oh, diba? Tandaan nyo yun, class, ha? Again, do not be confused. Pag darker na siya, so we can say that 
Pag darker na siya, so that appears high contrast, high degree of contrast, or short scale of contrast. Okay? So there is no gradual change with a small, uh, what's this? There is no gradual change with small difference in density, so the changes in the adjacent densities are a drop. So the, the phrase, more contrast, refers to the appearance of most black. Kaya high contrast siya. And white or clear areas. So if a densitometer was used to measure each density level present, the number of readings would be less than with a long scale of contrast. Mm -mm. So mas, uh, mas, mas madami, di ba? The measure of density level... Uh, to each uh, present, so the readings would be less with a long scale of contrast. Uh -uh. Okay, so radiographic contrast is an extremely complex factor of radiograph uh, radiographer's attempt to consistently achieve high-quality radiographs. The selection of the factors is extremely important. So, kilo voltage, take note, this is the factor that controls contrast. High KVP produces long scale of contrast, for example, chest, radiography, and low KVP produces short scale of contrast, for example, bone, radiography. So, which use uh, or uses uh, lower tech, uh, KVP factors. So, to review the facts associated with KVP, radiographers must understand that high KVP produces more scatter radiation. That's the fact. However, the amount of scatter radiation absorbed by the patient is less. When we say kasi class, um, absorbed rad uh, scatter radiation, halimbawa, this is the x-ray tube, this is the patient, this is your film, so, this one, the film that exits the useful beam of radiation, this is what we call the primary beam or the useful beam. So, yung mga nag-penetrate, tumagos sa pasyente at na-receive ng x-ray film, ito yung tinatawag nating, uh, tawag nating remnant radiation. Those na tumagos din naman, pero hindi nakarating sa x-ray film, yun yung tinatawag nating scatter radiation. So, this one pala, this scatter radiation, has or have direct effect on the contrast of the finished radiograph. So, to again, with high KVP, radiographers must understand that high KVP produces more scatter radiation and the amount of scatter radiation absorbed by the patient is less. So, with low kilo voltage, less scatter, kaya medyo higher yung contrast, and is produced, and the radiograph does not have many gray tones. However, the amount of radiation absorbed by the pre, uh, patient is increased. Kasi nga, we only use low technical factors, so yung nangyayari, shallow skin penetration. So, to compromise with the scale of contrast, radiographers must try to produce radiographs with moderate scale. So, a moderate scale contrast is between. Between siya ng long scale, which what we said that long scale are low contrast, and the short scale, which we said that this is of high contrast. So, in between, there is the optimum or the moderate contrast. The KVP selection is made to achieve optimal penetration of the part. So, I have given you the formula for KVP. So, this is done to achieve an optimal penetration of the part. So, this is called optimal KVP selection. And the KVP selection is neither very high, or I mean very low nor very high. So, Nasa swak lang na penetration based on your computation as to KVP equals thickness times 2 plus constant. Pero in class, not all of the anatomy are, are following that uh, formula. For example, the extremities, we don't have to compute din naman based on uh, the thickness. Uh -uh. We, we can understand that we, more in-depth when we discuss on KVP. So, optimal KVP will assure that the finished radiograph demonstrates structural detail without the excessive gray tones 
of long scale. So, very low or uh, high scale of contrast, very high or short scale of contrast. So, combined together in between is the optimum or the moderate scale of contrast. Again, this happens when we penetrate the part adequately. Okay? So, with better use of formula and of course, with your guide, the radiographic exposure technique guides. Magagawa nyo yan. Another na nakaka-affect sa contrast, as we said kanina, di ba, we have the silver, okay, so metallic silver. Of course, we have the processing. The proper time-temperature relationship and the chemical mixtures are necessary to build proper contrast during the processing cycle. So, uh, proper time-temperature. Actually, class, we have to check um, the the... Uh, the, 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 the immersion time, bakit nahirapan akong mag-explain? The immersion time, uh, up to how long tayo magde-develop ng film and up to how long tayo mag-fix ng film. Actually, basically, pag na-develop mo siya, nalagay mo na sa fixer, we, we are just have to wait na talagang ma, uh, ma-dissolve na yung mga black metallic silver in the... Uh, uh, pra, in, fixing solution. So, we have to measure the temperature of the solution. Sabi nga dito, uh, chemical fog will tend to prevent good contrast. Fog may result if temperatures are too high. Actually, uh, pag bago, bago pa yung processing solution, especially the developer, uh, bagong timpla, talagang mabilis yung, ano, yung uh, reaction niya sa film. Especially, mainit yan pag bago, di ba? Ganon din sa relasyon. Pag bago pa kayo, talagang mainit pa yung pagsasama nyo. Pero nung magtagal na, ramdam mo na yung panlalamig niya sa'yo. Ganon din yung processing solution. Pag nagtatagal na, wala na. Masyado nang nanlalamig. Kaya hindi na nakakapag-develop ng maganda. Pag bago pa naman... Uh, even uh, with a minimum immersion time, nagkakaroon na ng reaction yung film. Nagde-develop na siya agad. O, di ba? So, if the temperatures are too low, the density will not be sufficient to build adequate contrast on the film. Underdevelopment uh, presents or prevents the film from building adequate contrast. Hindi pala maganda na uh, masyadong mababaw or Ma, malamig yung solution kasi nga hindi na mag uh, produce ng, or, ng adequate contrast hindi naman maganda na masyadong mataas yung temperature kasi nga magkakaroon tayo ng development fog uh-uh. so paano what's the remedy actually we are to impose the time temperature, the relationship ng time at saka temperature. Pag masyadong hot, so, bawasan natin ang immersion time sa processing solution, especially sa developer. Pag masyado siyang low, dadagdagan natin ang immersion time, especially sa developer. Okay? Buti na lang may remedy. Samantala ang panlalamig niya sa'yo, wala. Bitter. Okay, next. What are uh, other factors that affect contrast? So, beam restriction or what we call the collimator. So, as you can see, we only have to limit the uh, portion that is exposed to the anatomy of interest only. Oo. Huwag mo na siyang i-expose. Halimbawa, chest x-ray lang, huwag mo nang i-expose ang abdomen. Maawa ka sa pasyente mo. Okay, so as the beam becomes more restricted to the actual size of the part, less scatter radiation is produced, which in turn reduces the fog, resulting in greater contrast on the film. Take note. So, pag there is restriction, there is collimation, so mas maganda ang Contrast. Kung sinusunod mo lang, pag sinabing bawal lumabas, bawal lumabas, mas maganda sana. 
char. So the use of beam restriction will increase contrast and produce radiographs with shorter scale of contrast. Okay, so again, pag sinabing shorter scale of contrast, high contrast yun class, di ba? So do not be confused. So yeah, sabi dito, pag if we limit oh, oh, uh, the use of beam restriction mag-increase, okay, the more collimated is the part, of course, the higher or the shorter the scale of contrast. Okay. Next, we have grids. Kasi, sinabi natin kanina, for example, sa skull, okay, we want to increase the technical factor. Okay, kasi nga, bone, uh, bone structure siya para makita natin yung detail. Kaya lang, what will happen is, talagang mag, ano siya, di ba? Maglo-low na yung contrast niya. So, our remedy is the, the use of this device. So, when a grid is in place, it absorbs scattered radiation or x-rays that travel in many directions to prevent heating the film. The use of grids will require an increase in exposure factors. However, there will be an increase in the contrast and the result will be a radiograph for, with a shorter scale of contrast. So, high ang technical factor mo, pero ganito yung appearance. Without grid yun class, without grid. Okay, nag-high ka or same technical factor with grid. So, ito yung lumabas. So, okay, as to, sabi nga dito, the use of grid will require an increase in exposure factor. Ito yung talaga yung mga sinasabing may mga ano pa, abangan, ang mga susunod na kabanata. Because we have different um, explanation as to papaano yung increase with the use of the grids. So, are you excited? Of course, dere ka mo excited kaya may exam na naman. Balitaw, so this is part of our uh, development as radiologic technologists. As, uh, as of now, I am assuming that you already know the implication of contrast. Of course, the different factors that affect contrast. And of course, the very important one is of course the pathology and composition of part. So, the composition of the anatomic Part of the interest is important in understanding the characteristics of contrast as recorded on the film. So disease processes that increase water content will result in radiograph exhibiting longer scale of contrast. So mga ganitong klase, ito yon yung mga disease processes that increase water content. So the same is true for fat content. Mga ganitong bagay din. So obese patients, <coughs> shout out. Never mind. With increased fat content will exhibit radiographs with longer scale. On the other hand, disease processes that cause the tissue destruction will exhibit a short scale of contrast. So, mga ganitong disease processes. So, ayun din naman pala. So, take note, hindi lahat ng mga pasyente nyo sa radiography, mga MME lang yung magpapa-X-ray. All of them, or kung hindi all, most of them may mga nararamdaman sa katawan. Mm -mm. So, definitely, nagvavari. So, again, pathology and composition of part, this is part of the subject contrast. Okay, so before that, so, ulitin ko lang ha, let us have a short recap. Okay, so, contrast, this is primarily controlled by KVP. And, Okay, so this is controlled by KVP. We have the formula thickness times 2 plus constant. And we said that MAS has no effect on contrast. Uh, density controls... M, uh, ano no? MAS controls density. Ano ba? Ako parang nalasing. MAS has no effect on contrast. It has only a direct effect on density. Okay, so we have the types of contrast. Okay, so we have subject contrast and film contrast. Okay, so we have different scale of contrast. And aside from the KVP, so other factors that affect the scale of contrast. Fast forward. So we have processing. We also have the beam restriction or the collimation. We have the grids. 
And of course, we have the pathology and composition of the part. So, um, based on what we have discussed today, so we can say with the right amount of MA and the right of MAS with the penetration and the attenuation, so we can categorize those structures that appear black on the radiograph, we term them lucent, radiolucent. And those uh, structures that appear Appear white on a radiograph, we call them opaque or radio opaque. So, for example, here we can say the stomach is radio lucent, kasi black siya, and the bones masasabi natin radio opaque siya, kasi white siya. So, all we have to do, kung feeling mo na discriminate ka because of the color of your skin, remember that um, whether you are black or a white, each one of us, i-accept lang natin yung ating pagkakaiba kasi nga, this is the main uh, substance of radiographic contrast. Density differences. Differences. Normal na talaga yung pagkakaiba-iba in life. All we have to do is to accept the differences. So, with the concept that we learned from the density plus with the contrast so we can now identify if ever man makabasa kayo ng isang uh, uh, radiological report so may intendihan yun na, the, na, na merong blackening or uh, let's say iba-ibang density sa radiograph okay sabi nga dito sa part na to if you can read, there is a confluent opacity. So, may term siyang ginamit, opacity. Meaning, opaque. Uh -oh, white. May white daw sa, or nakita in the right lung. Uh -oh. So, heart is not enlarged. Trachea is midline. Both hemidiaphragm and solsi are intact. Visualized osseous structures are intact. So, um, because opacity or white, pwede siyang consolidated, halimbawa, pneumonia, okay, or water, nananigas, whatsoever. So, that is, ganun yung appearance niya, class. Ano? So, ito naman, sabi dito, inhomogeneous densities are seen in, the, in both uh, upper lobes. So, around density, so there is blackening that is seen in the right mid lung, Tapos, uh, trachea is seen at the midline. So, so nagkaroon, may, may uh, diagnosis dito ng, t, uh, ano na, uh, ng mass sa right lang. Yan. Okay, so whether you like it or not, black and white combined are helpful in the process of radiography. So, that ends my discussion for today. So, if you have questions, you have inquiries, please do not hesitate to reach me through the different platforms. So, this has been your professor, your instructor, your teacher, your vlogger, your friend in the subject RT213 saying God bless and thank you for watching. See you when uh, the time comes or after the pandemic or kung pwede na tayong mag face to face. And that would be all. Goodbye!